So what's gain? I'll say this. The, the, the great thing about my job is gain is only important from the perspective it justifies a transaction. I don't have to figure this stuff out. With that said, every day I go through this every day with people, pretty much every phone call I'm on. Because I want to know whether the exchange makes sense. I want to know what that person has. I want to know what the property is. I want to know what they paid for it, what they put into it during the time they've owned it, and so on and so forth. So gain is simply the, the adjusted sales price minus the basis on the property. What's your basis on the property? Purchase price plus capital improvements minus depreciation, in a nutshell. All right, once again, you want to talk to your tax people, uh, get their perspective on things, and understand exactly what your obligation is. But this is how quickly it changes. Remember I talked about gifting? If I gifted a property to a kid of mine, what would their basis be? It would be what mine was. If they inherit it, they get the stepped up basis. If I bought the property, so I said, basis is purchase price plus capital improvements minus appreciation. My point is, depending on how you receive that property, that initial number varies dramatically. What if you did an exchange into it? You had a basis carry for it. 1031 is a tax deferred exchange. It's not a tax free exchange. I hear people say tax free all the time. It's not. Tax deferral, basis gets carried forward, gain goes forward. 1034, anybody remember 1034, the old residential rollover? So in, it was it 97, we had that change from 1034 to 121. 1034 was a rollover. You sold your home, you had two years to buy a new home of equal or greater value. If you're 55 or older, you had a one-time exclusion of 125 in gain. The reason I bring that up is we had a basis carry forward once again. So depending on how you got that property, your basis is that initial acquisition price is going to vary. You pull it out of your pocket, that's what you paid for it, that's that initial number. You exchange into it, you had basis carry forward. 1034, basis carry forward, gifting the person that granted the gift, their basis, inheritance, stepped up basis. So that number can vary dramatically. Plus improvements. So I talk to people every day and I say, okay, so during the time you owned the property, did you do any capital improvements? Oh yeah, I did this, did that, did all these different things. So well, did you write off anything? Oh, I wrote it all off. What'd they do? They expensed it. They didn't capitalize it. Expensing, you write it off, does nothing for your basis. Capitalizing does. Depreciation. Did you take depreciation? This has been a rental house for the last 10 years for you. Did you take depreciation? No, oh, no, I didn't do it. What's the government's position? You got to take it. You should have, therefore you did. So maybe you didn't even get the benefit of it, but they're going to say, they're going to treat you as though you did. So that's even worse than the other. But the bottom line is you've got depreciation that's going to be on that. If you just bought a property, an investment house, for example, and never rented it, you're not going to take depreciation. I was just sitting there. But you start renting it, you've got to take the depreciation. Yes? And, but let's suppose you start with one thing, and then 30 years later, that thing gets swapped to, say, property number six or seven. All right? And suppose you know, your basis carries for it. Who besides you is keeping track of that? Nobody. I mean, your tax people, every time you do an exchange, well, I shouldn't say that. Federal government, every time you do an exchange, the year in which you do the exchange with your tax return, you're filing in the 8824, which is a basis for carry forward calculation. So that thing I know they, I know accompanies it, but as far as going back. Yeah, how do they go back? So what's the, what's the prevent you from making a mistake on the basis calculation? Well, if you made, that, that's the thing, if you made the mistake long ago, long enough ago, then you're fine, right? Because they can only go back so far, so, but, you know, once again, that's why you want tax people. I want tax people in the way because I don't want to have to deal with that stuff, right? I want somebody there that it gets questioned. And what we're looking at, just think about that change, that drop and swap. I talked about changing ownership. You know, what happens with that? If somebody questions it, I want to make sure that's done. If we change your home from, let's say you take your home and convert it into investment, or we take an investment and convert it into your home, we can go both ways on it. But those things, there's no tax consequence on the conversion, but there is potentially downstream if we're not careful with what's going on. So, it, you know, this is why, you know, flat tax, how can, how can you argue, argue against flat tax, right? I mean, it's just straight, it would be simple. But what are most politicians? Lawyers, right? 
and, and how, what percentage of legal practice is, is estate planning or tax planning, and, and back to the tax world too. So you think about that stuff, you think about deductions, you think about write-offs or yeah, any number of things that go on, but it's complicated. It's very complicated very quickly. So that's why you know, you're always looking at, at maintaining records the best you can. And, and I've had people, uh, I, you know, I, I say this in the presentations, I had one gal I'll never forget. She got the property, so we're going through, I'm going through this stuff with her. So, well, what, you know, what's, where, what's your basis? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, my husband gave it to me. Well, can you talk to him? Now he's incarcerated. Well, where did he get it? Well, he got it from a buddy who was incarcerated. So it's like, you know, what was my advice? I mean, okay, let's go talk to some tax people so you're not going to be incarcerated. Let's do that. So the deal is you got to fix it the best you can and do it and support it and you know, make sure you've got a reason. If you're making changes stuff, make sure you've got a reason to do this stuff. There's a bold down there that says fan of gain. And I think this is something that's really important, something that people do not understand. On a home, if you, so, so unfortunately the last decade's been pretty tough on a lot of people, right? We had a lot of foreclosures, a lot of things happened. And if you had a home foreclosed, you've got some tax relief on that foreclosure. On income properties, you don't. Income properties, sort of the ultimate slap is you could lose a property to foreclosure and pay for that privilege. So what I mean by that is, in a foreclosure, the government treats the sales price, the, the debt on the property is the sales price. So if the debt exceeds the basis, the delta between the debt and that basis is gain. So, and, and believe it or not, I think we've got two more properties that we're expecting to go through this, big properties like this, being foreclosed before year's end. And what happens is we end up getting involved in the transaction just pre-foreclosure so that when the property's foreclosed, our client has been removed of any actual debt relief. And that's what we're talking about, triggering the gain in that situation. And their, their choice is this. They lose the property and pay tax for that privilege, or we set up an exchange. It's really sort of funny because we don't get any money. We just have an exchange agreement in place, an assignment of membership interest. That transfers the asset when it's foreclosed. We've just isolated our client from, from debt relief. And that data transfer, the date of assignment starts at 45180. And for our clients, it's a pretty easy choice. If they've got money to go forward, their choice is, hey, I'm going to pull money out of pocket, pay the tax, and get nothing, or I can pull roughly the same amount out and go get a property. So they'd obviously rather do that.